this is Nelly Deutsch, and this is the second session of the day. And uh, we're going to be talking about activities. I hope everyone has enrolled in Moodle for Teachers, Moodle 2.7. If you haven't, I'm going to add the link to the chat box. If you have any problems, you can always email me at NellieDeutsch at gmail.com. Uh, there's the Moodle for teachers.org where everything is completely free. Uh, the Moodle training is there. If you could add in the chat box where you're from and uh, feel free to use the chat box. It does not disturb. <laughs> it's actually an activity. And that's one of the things that we'll be talking about, the chat on Moodle, because Moodle also has a chat besides the comment box, which is completely different. So we've got Italy, Hawaii, uh, let's see here, Venezuela, and people are going to be coming in as we go. We've got Bolivia and people that uh, have been very active. Elena's here as well from New Jersey, who've been very, very active. And that's what it's all about. It's about being active on Moodle and learning about the activities. There are many, many activities. The number is unlimited and it's going to be growing as the open source opens up and people get excited about creating new activities. Another word for activities, anyone, while we're waiting for people to come in, uh, a word for activities that you're familiar with and you don't even realize, but you know these words because you use them every single day. And I don't mean activity. So Julie's from NV is, <laughs> what is NV? Sorry for being ignorant. but um, I'm not familiar with, is that a state in the United States? So the question is Nevada. All right, how could I forget Nevada? Right, well, I'm not American, I'm Canadian, and even though we did study uh, American geography, um, and we know the states, but we don't know the short forms for the states. All right. So, um, <laughs> I know that part. I just don't know the short forms. So thank you, Rosemary. Activity, action, movement, learning. All right. Training goddess. <laughs> you, did, you can't tell. You mean it's not written all over me? No, yeah, because I have a German name. But then Canadians are from all over. Canada is known as a global country where there are very few real Canadians. Uh, everybody's an immigrant and proud to be an immigrant. So uh, generally, uh, there's no such thing as a, a I don't know, Canadian is as in the sense that there is a full American, no such thing. So anyone who comes to Canada is a Canadian if they're an immigrant. In we, thank you, Elaine. Yes. Uh, only they know, but everybody's actually uh, a newcomer. The maple syrup, yes. Do you know how it's made though? <laughs> That's what they teach you in school, you know, uh, things like that. Uh, very, very Canadian oriented science classes. All right. So a little bit about me you saw there and uh, back to activity. Well, other words for activity, I'll start you off is apps. Do you know that apps are actually, well, do you know what apps stand for? I'm not sure if they have double P's or not. Do you know what apps stand for? Application, exactly. Do you know other words for um, applications? Let's see. Hello, Pablo. Good to see you. Use. 
ah, you, you mean from the original meaning of the word apps, iPhone, yes, <laughs> that's the idea. Apps, iPhone, Android, smartphones, that's right, the apps. And apps are up, what do they do? Another word is plugins, okay, plugins are also apps or applications. I told you you knew these words, but do you know what they do? In your iPhone, think of your iPhone, your Android, your smartphone, um, whatever phone you're using. I just went back to my to iPhones. I was on the Samsung for a while. CSS. <laughs> uh, they let us play. Really? That's what you think apps do? Well, they... Another word is they facilitate interface, okay? They facilitate, they, they make things easier. So if the internet takes time to load and so on, the apps on the iPhone and the Android and so on uh, actually facilitate so that we get things faster, more efficient and, and fun. It's always fun. Everything that's connected to doing uh, and learning is fun. We don't always realize it, but it's fun for everything that is not candy. That's right. Just about. It just it means to facilitate. That the original idea uh, was to facilitate, and that's what it does. Okay. So if we go to the agenda, we're going to discuss definitions, purpose of this whole activity feature. It's a feature, by the way, on Moodle 2.7. Certificates, we'll get back to that in case there are any questions. And of course, sample of activities. And as I said, the plugins apps are coming up all the time. You know this um, in, um, in your smartphones uh, and maybe uh, tablets and so on, that apps are always coming up. They're always being developed to make our life easy and more fun. So, uh, same thing with Moodle. Lots of uh, Moodle apps, over 300, and more are developing as we go. So when we talk about activities, we're actually talking about plugins or applications. Definition of activities, well, task or action, maybe you can help along here. Any other way that you would define uh, an activity? You love your smartphone. Yes, we all do, don't we? Because we like to learn. And it really offers us a chance to learn, just like the internet. It offers us a chance to learn through different kinds of apps or applications. Yes, movement was mentioned. Very good. ST, you participated. <laughs> I don't know what ST stands for. Um, so task or action. Uh, for what purpose are these tasks and actions, it was mentioned before, and movement? You know, we always think of movement as a way to progress, and learning helps us progress, of course. Everything has an acronym, yes, definitely. So it's a way to move forward, progress. We don't go back, we only go forward. Uh, but sometimes we need to go back in order to have a nice um, way to go even further forward. All right, so uh, sometimes there's friction there if you think of physics, but that just makes things uh, go faster in the long run. We go back in order to jump forward, and you can see that in sports too. So action is really a way to learn, move forward, have fun, and also ways to interact with the content that we mentioned before with the resources and resources are also people so also interact with people and instruct and the instructor of course and this is done through activities or apps and again there are plugins or applications with double p feel free to add uh, as we go all right, so I wanted to uh, discuss this because this is where, <clears throat> excuse me, many of you um, had problems with the resources, but this is also an activity, and it's called I, well, it's called LTI, LTI, which stands for, notice it's a registered trademark, so you can't really take it from anyone. So LTI is Learning 
tools interperality. Okay, interperality. Okay, which means that if you use this word, you have to be aware that someone else had created it. It's not just an acronym, it stands for something specific. And uh, this is a PowerPoint presentation. If you go into um, the course, you should be able to uh, get the link and then you can follow the PowerPoint presentation. The uh, Most of the images are clickable so that you can get the link to where it takes you. And you can also, as I said, follow. So here's the link to the PowerPoint presentation. There it is in the chat box. And if you click on the image, IMS Global, you'll get the link that'll take you there. And you have a list of uh, IMS. And uh, if you go into Edu Apps, you'll get LTIs. And they're really good. I, I suggest you try many of them, and you'll be surprised at what's there. Oh, you got a baby. That's cute. Well, the baby's learning. Unless it's a non-human baby, fuzzy baby. Um, thank you, Tom, for adding uh, the link. Fuzzy little kitty. Oh, okay. I have a big fuzzy kitty outside. Not in the house. All right. So let's uh, let me take you there now. Let's see if I can screen share. And uh, we'll go there to take a look. I see that I have to, um, oh, it seems to ask me to update my Java, which is not going to happen right now. So um, maybe we should forget about it. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to um, upgrade my Java right now. I'll do that later. So in the meantime, when I'm not going to um, screen share. I'll do that uh, later on. Okay? <laughs> no, I'm here. It's okay. I heard you all the time. Uh, so it's okay. So um, take a look at the PowerPoint, click on it, and uh, see what you like best. Okay, I'm, I'm referring to Edu Apps. Take a look at Edu Apps and tell me which one you'd like to try uh, today in the um, teacher practice area. Okay, so the link, uh, let me get the link for you to make your life easier. Um, it, you're really going to enjoy this. You are going to have so much fun with this um, because you're going to see immediate results. <laughs> and that's always very, very appealing. And you'll be able to uh, use the LTI right away. As I said, you just need to go to the teacher practice area. And in order to find the teacher practice area, you go to my courses, and I'll be showing you this uh, in a minute. Let me take you there now. My courses, so you see, uh, let me check where it is. You should all know where my courses is, but if you don't, you go into the Moodle for Teachers. Tom just added the link. And at the top in the blue area, when you go into the website, you'll see my courses. Oh, there it is. Okay, my courses. This is what it'll look like at the very top of Moodle for Teachers. Exactly. That's it. Uh, yes, it's based on code embedding, but not really. It's not really code embedding. It's more like uh, adding the link. Okay, but you can do it both ways. So go into your account on Moodle for Teachers, go into My Courses, 
and then into the um, that's yours Tom I hope it's everybody's too and then you go into um, my courses and you'll see a list of your courses under the list you will see the teacher practice area you were enrolled automatically Tom gave you teacher rights if you don't have teacher rights uh, please ask us Tom or I and we will give you uh, teacher rights so that you can turn on the light as I call it, but it's actually the editing. Okay, and then you'll be able to play around. After you document and screen share everything that you do, and if you don't want to use your voice, you can use slide speech, but you need to get the, capture the images, and then go to slide speech and explain what you are doing. Yes, I realize that. Excellent, Tom. So you'll be, look, everybody has something to do. There's no such thing as knowing everything about anything. Nobody knows anything, everything about everything. All right, so we, some of us know some about some. So we all can learn from these edu apps. They're just amazing. Password. Uh, no, Pablo. Pablo, I believe you have an account. You should have an account there, uh, Pablo, on uh, Moodle for Teachers. And um, if you go into the first course, into I think you're a non-beginner. There, as always, there are two courses: one for beginners and non-beginners as well. Yes, Tom. Thank you. Okay, so you can go in there. And take a look at what's there right now. You're going to be amazed. All right, so I want to know which one Tom has added. Which one would you like to try out in the Edu um, apps? Okay, go into the Edu apps now. Did I add the link? I believe I did, but let me add it again for those that need it. There it is. I just love this site. Uh, and I, I keep experimenting because I, I like everything that's there just about. You like edu creations? Okay, choose something and then you'll be able to try it out. Quizlet, very good, Elaine. You're going to love it, love it. Um, I use it through um, the LTI as well. Oh, use it on your phone. That's great. So you can use it. By the way, I hope all of you realize that Moodle has an apps. Uh, mobile apps and students love it so you can get it on your let's see if I have my phone here you can get it on your mobile it's really really handy uh, to use really handy actually I think it's more it's more fun to use the apps than to use the internet, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. I just, I just find apps very, very handy, even though it's, you know, it's a bit smaller. But I like the way it goes. Instead of going uh, horizontally, it goes vertically in a very smart way. Uh, really, really smart. All you need to do is get this. You can see it there. Okay, it's yet, yeah, of course, it's an orange yellow. Okay, that's what it looks like. And, um, and you add yourself. And you can have as many sites as you want. This one, I think, is Moodle for Teachers. That yeah, is, it's uh, Moodle for Teachers. You can see everything is uh, like that. And you just go into, if I want to go into Moodle for Beginners, it's got contents, participants. And then it comes out white, of course. It's not all um, orange. It's really a lot of fun. <laughs> Much easier. I wish it were that way on the internet, in the browser. It would be a lot more convenient. No, it's not It's not so much the small screens, Tom. It's the fact it's just very, very smart. You see, the weeks go this way. That's how the weeks go. So you just click on them. And it's now we're in week, 
Uh, are we, we're in week three, right? If I'm not mistaken, am I right? Week three. So you see it like that. Okay, I don't know if that's visible. Week three. So all you need to do is simply click on uh, activities. And then, oh, I have to log in. And then you have to log in. But everything is kind of compact and very logical. It makes Moodle a lot more fun to navigate because Moodle can be overwhelming uh, when it's in a browser. So for those of you that want things to be simple, use the Moodle apps and your students will love it. They will absolutely love it. So you like study room. All right, let's continue here. So what is the purpose? The same as the purpose for the resources for those of you who are here. The purpose of the activities is to interact for learning and then demonstrate what you learn through presentations so that you can sustain learning by teaching as a way to learn. I highly recommend it uh, for you to um, get involved in teaching your students how to teach as a way to learn. And as I mentioned, I'm not the first. He wrote a book. He got the credit. But I'm sure many, many teachers realize that uh, students can benefit from learning to teach. And of course, uh, we want to engage our students and to use technology. Um, I also mentioned certificates for those who are not here. Uh, you have to reflect on five through blog posts, and then you share the link in the submission area in order to get your certificate. You need to, uh, Moodle does this, okay? Moodle does this automatically. So by submitting, you're actually practicing using Moodle, but you're also reflecting and using technology. What I wanted to show you, we talked about this before, is that you'll be using the following technologies, and I encourage you to teach your students how to do the same. Okay, so PowerPoint, blogging, uh, for the badges, Elaine, not for the certificate. Okay, blogging and adding multimedia through screencasting, such as MoveNote, Screencast-O-Matic, SlideSpeech, Jing, and the editor. I just want to mention that with SlideSpeech, you don't need to use your mic. A robot will speak for you if you write the notes. If you don't write the notes, you will not hear a voice. Okay, this is MoveNote where you need to add a PowerPoint presentation and then you add your voice and you get the link and you embed it. Okay, you can embed on in your blog post actually. Screencast-O-Matic actually uh, goes through screens that you show and you can speak and explain what you're showing. Okay, I also talked about slide speech, and you can also use your smartphone with slide speech. If you want to know more about this, you'll have to watch the recording on the resources. What's important here is capturing images. This is how you can communicate with your students and with us, of course. If you're having problems or if you want your students to explain where the problem is, ask them to capture a, the image and then add through Jink, you can add arrows. Okay, so Jink allows you to add arrows. Awesome also does. You can also use Snagit, which costs money. Bounce. Uh, we also mentioned the Rich Editor that has three layers or three rows but you need to open uh, in number one in order to get the three rows. We also mentioned Poodle. How many of you have tried Poodle during the break? I hope you did. Uh, I just love Poodle. 
Let me know in the chat box if you tried Poodle. Do it. Nope, nope. Well, you should because it's a lot of fun. You should also try the others. Uh, not only the mic, you can have mic video. You can also play around with uh, the whiteboard and take your photo. Okay, so I hope you'll play around with that later on. And um, let me continue here. That's the certificate for those who are not here that you will get. The badges, there are four badges. You need to uh, qualify by going through a criteria. Let me just take you through the criteria here. I'll get a color. Okay, the criteria is not that difficult anymore. Okay, for example, for week four, well, week four is week one down here. Notice week four is really nothing. It's easy to get them. Not too many things. Okay, so the criteria is not too difficult. And thank you, Tom. <clears throat> okay, there are two courses. How many have not registered for the Moodle for Teachers? If you have, thumbs up. If you haven't, thumbs down. Hi, Brian. I hope things are working better. Sometimes things don't work too well in uh, public places. Well, not public, but uh, universities and schools because of um, firewalls. DPM. All right. So join one of them, but only one, either the beginners or the non-beginners. You need to be, but if you just want to uh, get a certificate for the uh, uh, webinars, that's possible too. There are two venues, um, Elaine and others. One is the uh, live presentations, and the other one is Moodle training. You can take either or, or both. Now, if you're in... Um, either the Moodle for Beginners or non-beginners, of course, you can go into the teacher practice area right now. The manager, you'll be also be managers, <clears throat> excuse me, in week four, um, you'll get manager rights where you can be a manager of a course, which is really exciting. So first of all, practice the activities. Okay, and that's what we're talking about right now. How do you add an activity? You um, go into the teacher practice area and you need to turn on the light. If you don't have teacher rights, you'll have to ask for them. We may have missed you. So ask. And once you get teacher rights, you'll be able to turn on the light and go into add an activity or resource. Click and try things out. You can't break anything. So don't worry. But do delete once you document your work. I wanted to show you that there are many activities that you can get for your schools or if you want to have a private Moodle. By the way, how many of you are using Moodle in school? If you could just give me a thumbs up. I use it in three different schools. And trust me, it's completely different. I use it at Atlantic University. Well, that's where I, I'm the administrator, so, but that's what they want. Um, so it's completely different from how it is at my, at the college, teacher's college that I teach and at a community college that I teach, completely different. Um, so universities uh, decide whatever they want and, and then that's it. If you want to have your own Moodle, Pablo, I believe um, you're interested. If you want to have your own Moodle, you can. I've had my own Moodle since 2003 um, you can talk to me and I'll try to uh, help out it's a lot of fun I mean I was using Moodle before they were being used uh, officially at universities oh that sounds interesting Julie I didn't see the beginning of that. But yeah, it doesn't have to be a, a college or university. It could be a school. It could be a public school. It could be an organization. Really? Well, I do it. 
a training goddess. I've been doing it since 2004 or five. I've been giving uh, Moodle training on my own Moodle. Uh, so yes, <laughs> uh, it's been it's been over 11 years, right? Uh, it's been a while. All right, so these are some of the uh, activities that we don't have in Moodle for Teachers right now. I have, I'm going to add uh, attendance and questionnaire. I wanted to add big blue button. Have you heard of big blue button? Anyone here, of, uh, give me a thumbs up if you've heard or a smiley, if you've heard of big blue button. It's completely free. Uh, it's open source. The only problem is it drains your Moodle. It just, well, not your Moodle, your, uh, um, your server. Okay. It just drains your server. It, it just, uh, it's very difficult. You really have to have a huge server. You have to have a lot of money to have a big server to upkeep a big server. But if you're a school, the school might be interested, uh, as an individual, probably not. It's like WizIQ. It's Adobe based. So it looks like WizIQ. It acts like WizIQ, but it looks more like Adobe Connect. So that's big blue button. You can also add attendance. As I said, I'm going to add attendance. Uh, questionnaire is also interesting. Attendance means the teachers can take attendance. Even though Moodle tracks, you know, Moodle has an amazing tracking system. Nonetheless, you might want to add the date specific and have it organized. So the attendance is a great way to organize uh, student attendance. There's also games. I have games on, I think, one of my uh, Moodle uh, websites. I have about, I don't know how many I have, maybe 15 Moodle sites, maybe more. So games, there are various games, Hangman, Crossword. This is great for uh, young children, as well as for EFL, English as a Foreign Language uh, students, but others as well. There's Sudoku, Snakes and Ladders, Hidden Lots of games, if you're interested in, um, in games. Um, if you want to know more about attendance, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is an example of attendance. Um, I'll be adding it soon so you'll get a chance to see it. At least you'll, for sure you'll get it in um, Moodle MOOC 6, I promise. But maybe before that. Um, so in addition, if you want to know more, about the uh, plugins, you can go into this slide, slide number 32. Do you have the link to the PTT? Uh, let me get it for you. In slide number 22, if you go into that slide, you'll be able to uh, get the link. Let me share the uh, PowerPoint presentation with you once again. Uh, here it is, slide 22. Yes, there it is. Slide number 22. If you click on Moodle Home Plugins Activities, your Moodle version 2.7, but you'll notice that some of the plugins are for old Moodle versions. Uh, many have not been updated. For example, the WebQuest. I was involved in the WebQuest plugin. Uh, which started in 2005. It went up to 2008, 9, 2009, maybe 2000, and then it just disappeared. Um, so some of the um, plugins are no longer there. So take a look and make sure that you look at the version. Okay, which version? If you like something, let me know. I'll get it. Okay, so let me add this officially. If you like a plugin or activity, as we call them, activity or apps, if you see that you like uh, a plugin or activity, let me know and I will add it. Okay, that's a promise. All right, so uh, take a look at what's there. Anybody have the link yet? to this um, slide, slide number 22. Anyone? Oh, you want reading plugins for Moodle? Okay, if there is such a thing, just share the link with me, okay, Susan? It'll make it easier than for me to start looking for it. So if you see a plugin, let me just add, uh, share the link with me. 
okay, so that uh, I can get it. So I need the link, Susan, to the uh, reading plugins. There are lots of really amazing ones. So anyone have, oh, Poodle. Um, yes, yes, I have. Poodle, uh, there are two kinds of Poodle. We're talking about the Poodle in the um, editor. Okay. Julia, I see numbers, I, I get worried. Um, and, and if it has a dollar sign in front of it, uh, 200,000, what is that, million? I don't know, this is zero, maybe missing there. Um, so if you could tell me what you're talking about there. All right, so let's, uh, $200,000. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the uh, activities. Uh, notice uh, these come, most of them come with the Moodle. We're talking about Moodle 2.7. The one that doesn't come with the Moodle that has been added so far, and I'd like to add more. I just need your input and what you'd like to see. Okay, so that would help. What I've added to this, uh, oops, is um, the WizIQ. Sloodle doesn't come with Moodle, so that was added. Uh, let's see what else was added here. Um, and certificate. Yeah, the certificate, oddly enough, doesn't come with a Moodle. Okay, so I added certificate. And um, let's see if there's any. And that's it. Okay, every. Oh, and, and yes, I added hot potatoes. Sorry, I also added hot potato. Everything else you can get uh, with the Moodle if you're installing Moodle. Unless the checklist doesn't come with it. But I think it does. Sloodle. Sloodle is like Second Life and Moodle. It's a common, but the guy who developed it, I don't know what happened to him. His name is Paul, um, Canadian. He's been traveling and has been having lots of vacations, so he's not around. Uh, he said he would give us uh, training on Second Life. Uh, he was the guy, he's involved with Sloodle these days and plus Moodle. I'll try to get Paul to um, come around. Right now he's having a good time, as we all should be, away from his computer. You don't have Sloodle, Ivana, but you can add. As I said, Sloodle is added. The ones in the boxes do not come with Moodle. They're added. And I think that's it. I've covered all of them. The others come with Moodle. The ones in boxes are exceptions, and you can add anything else that you like okay so are there any questions okay I asked you to try things out so you could ask uh, questions uh, one point I saw there 1.9 still works it has nano uh, nanogram what's it called nano something or other um, things that are still around Nanogram, exactly, exactly that. But I believe you can get nano. I was trying to use it today on one of the Moodle sites that uh, I use for teaching. Um, and I think it's a Moodle 2.4. Hmm, 2.4. Vimeo um, can be used. All you need to do is you add a link. YouTube and Vimeo both can be added by hyperlinking. You hyper, and we should all know how to do that, hyperlink uh, the link, activate it, and then you get your Moodle, your uh, YouTube or Vimeo, okay? You don't need to embed anymore, which is really wonderful. No need to embed. Are there any questions or things you tried and you wanna know more about? Hot, yes, somebody wrote hot pot. That's uh, hot potatoes. Yes, Tom, you um, quizzes and other apps. Yes, not everybody likes hot potato because in 2.7, it's very hard to track and add it to uh, the grading system. Yes, exactly, Tom. You need to activate 
the link, the YouTube or Vimeo link in the editor, and then you get the video right there, which is really um, awesome. Uh, Sludel Claire is um, a way to get into Second Life. By the way, how many of you are using Second Life? If you can give me thumbs up if you're on Second Life. Uh, yes, Pablo, that's one of the problems. The hot potatoes are exactly the same. <laughs> they, they haven't done anything to it, which is why it's problematic. Uh, it's been problematic since Moodle 2.4, uh, I believe. Uh, I've been there almost 10 years. Where? Uh, Second Life, yes. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I uh, I find that Second Life just drains my computer. It just seems to be a, a system that just kills your computer unless you really have to be in there. Yeah, you can get addicted very easily. It's wonderful, but I don't think our computers are ready for it. Maybe there should be an apps. Is there an apps for Second Life? I mean, that, that would make it easier. Brian has added Sloodle. Exactly. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. So Sloodle is really a way to get into your uh, Second Life through Moodle. And the guy, it's OpenSim. It's also available on OpenSim. But as I said, um, right now, nobody's doing anything with it. It seems to be on hold. So if you're interested, uh, you may want to try to um, write. Uh, see, there's no, not even support there. You can go to their forums and get information. It's a Moodle website. If you want to know things about a Poodle, which is the, um, the interactive uh, audio and video, you can uh, connect with J with Justin, Justin Hunt, uh, for Poodle things. You can also now add Poodle to your blog. You can add Poodle to your blog, which is really amazing. Justin just wrote me. Justin um, provides support for Poodle. I mean, he's the um, the guy behind Poodle, and he um, he's very responsive. If you have a question, he responds right away. If you want to install Poodle on your Moodle, he will also help you. He provides support. He's an amazing person. He was, he was an English language teacher until recently, and now he's full-time a Moodle developer. Uh, so I think he taught English as a foreign language for 25 years. He's from New Zealand, but lives in Japan. Yes, it's a SCORM package. Allows you to upload. Exactly. That's right, Ivana. No, he's from New Zealand. Sorry about that. Why did you think he was from New Zealand? Because so many people are. <laughs> I mean, from uh, Australia. Because uh, Martin Dogiamis is. Oh, you are. Okay, that's great. Uh, so try try them out. The SCORM um, package, try it out. Uh, there are a lot of really amazing things. You have a chance to do it in the um, teacher practice area. So feel free to, uh, to do that. Yeah, that's the one. That's the plugins, Brian. That's right. That's the one that um, I shared before. The problem with Articula, Julie, is that it's so expensive, you know? I, I try to talk to the guy, and I, I talk to someone who does things for him. It's just too expensive. I mean, teachers cannot afford, um, you know, unless they're sponsored, to use Articulate or Adobe Captivate or, you know, any of these. And it's, it's really not fair, because who's going to use it but teachers? It would be a great tool for teachers. Totally agree. And I keep looking out, you know, in case they have some bargains for teachers, but nothing like that. No, they don't. I try to get it through the University of Phoenix, but it's still... And you know what they offered me? Even 50% off would cost you a fortune. Uh, you know, who could afford it? So, yeah. Oh my gosh, is that a price? 
So, so think about it. 50%. They offered me 50% off. I said, well, you know, your 50% off is still off. You know, it's off for individuals. Yeah. Any other questions or um, suggestions or comments that you'd like to make? Oh my gosh, Julie, that's horrible. That's a nightmare. 700 just to, well, that's the problem. They, they require you to upgrade. That is so unfair. Ah, workshops. Well, would you believe it? You know what workshops is? It's an assessment. It's peer assessment. Nobody in the world would think that workshop stands for peer assessment. It is very difficult to uh, try out the workshop unless you get a, a few people together because it goes by a certain um, timing. There's timing to it. The way it works is uh, the teacher creates it, a, a certain task. The students do the task, and then they have to um, peer review each other. So if one student doesn't do it, you can't move on to the next. So it's uh, pretty difficult to get it going. Yeah, that's why, Ivana, that's why you couldn't. It's very hard to demonstrate how it works. But if you can get a few people together, and there are plenty of people, uh, in the courses to uh, have one person do it and try it out. And then you can get uh, the demo and share. Okay, so get together and I suggest you do the workshop as a group, a few people together, as many as you want. Um, it doesn't really matter because the idea is to peer review. Yeah, it's peer assessment. And it's a really good idea. It's just hard to demonstrate. Any other um, questions? How many of you have uh, a place on Second Life or Open Sim? If you have an address, you might want to try Sloodle. If not, I wouldn't um, worry about it. Uh, Priscilla has three courses in herbal medicine for teenagers. I'm looking for a lot of fun. And that's great. Okay, that's that's wonderful, Priscilla. Uh, you might want to try different activities. And you're invited to go to each other's activities. This way, mind mapping is great. Anything could be engaging. It depends what you do with it and how you get your students excited. And the first thing is to be excited yourself. Yes, mind map could work. It doesn't work always work for everybody. You might want to have um, a hot potato or a, um, a choice activity is nice too. But think about an external tool. External, there are lots of really nice external tools that you might want to try um, in the uh, Edu apps. There's some really nice ones, um, including the YouTube video. You can also do Edpuzzle. I don't know if you have heard of Edpuzzle Media or Educom. You might want to try that. Um, there is Educom. Mm -hmm. eh, sorry, Edpuzzle. But let me give you the Edu apps in case you want to do an LTI. You can also try, if you're interested, um, there's something that I really love, but your students will love it too. They can create uh, dialogues. I don't know how young they are, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, try to use plot o gram plotogram, plotogram, let me uh, plot, plotagon, sorry, plotagon, plotagon. And then you can share that. By the way, any, if anyone's interested, you can use that instead of the move note and some of the others. Have you heard of Plotagon? Anyone hear of it? I'll get the link for you if Brian doesn't get it before me. And it's also an apps, which makes it exciting. And it's completely free, which I love. Okay, there it is. Uh, sorry, I beat him to it. 
um, Plotagon. Uh, you're gonna love it. It's it's really really nice. Um, Elaine, I think you were asking. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. Again, uh, for every age because everybody likes to play. No, I think Brian has a slow connection. That's the only reason. You might want to try database. Database is pretty nice too. Has anyone tried database yet? Quizlet. I don't like quizzes that much, so I'm not. I don't. I don't think. I think you know who enjoys uh, creating uh, quizzes. I think teachers enjoy it more than students enjoy doing them. But that's. You can get your students to do a quiz. They might find that more fun. Oh, Elaine, Platagon is just uh, amazing. And their support is wonderful, too. Uh, so. The quizzes on Moodle are pretty easy to track if you're interested in that. Yeah, there's a database. OK, what you basically have to do is you have to do the work. You have to uh, demonstrate through uh, the tools that I mentioned before. You have to demonstrate and teach. Now, you don't have to choose, as I said, what's in the box, okay? So you're exempt from choosing a certificate, even though I'm sure you'd like to give yourself certificates. Certificates, Loodle, uh, Hot Potato, and Wiz IQ. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, but you might want to. And I didn't mention Wiz IQ. Wiz IQ actually is an activity. You uh, click on this area on the okay the radio bullet there and um, you'll be able to create a live online class from Moodle to WizIQ. Okay I don't know if you were here when I mentioned this book Julie but this you might be interested in uh, this book. It's leaders of their own learning. And it's not only for young kids, but it's for kids from kindergarten up to adults. The idea is that you show, demonstrate what you learn through um, student assessment. You do the presentation, just like you have to do for the reflection. You create a PowerPoint. You present what you learn. And... Um, that's really active engagement. The wiki, um, yeah, it's uh, internal. They haven't really worked on it. Uh, Open University, if you're interested, I might be adding it. Open University created their own um, apps for wiki. They have a wiki a plugin, if you want to call it, or activity or apps. Okay, as I said, they're all the same. Um, for the wiki so you could you could actually look it up on the internet it's uh, available somewhere I think I had it here uh, before maybe I can get it for you it's um, it looks interesting might be something that uh, you would consider Another thing to get your students engaged, those of you who asked, maybe you'll figure out how to add it to um, Moodle, is Kahoot. Have you heard of Kahoot? Thank you, Brian. That's it. That's the one. Thank you. That's right. That's their wiki, if I'm not mistaken there. Um, let me see if that's the wiki. Uh, you can actually install it on your Moodle. No, that's just the Open University. But Open University has a wiki plugin. It's um, a new plugin, fairly new, that they developed. They develop a lot of Moodle uh, plugin, Open University for um, for a wiki. There it is. It's called OU Wiki. Interesting name, huh? OU Wiki. Open University Wiki. There it is. Okay, there's the. That's what I meant, uh, Brian. Okay, it's uh, a Moodle. Notice they say plugin, but we know it's an activity. 
Okay, but that's just another uh, word for it. Kahoot is amazing, Julie. It is amazing. Your students can't fall asleep whether they're face to face or uh, at home because they have to. Um, I mean, it's very, very engaging. Kahoot. Yes, exactly, Priscilla. It's, you know, our students, I don't know about your students, but my students have their smartphones open. And I, I like that, but I want them to do, to follow me um, or follow what I'm doing and not go off on their own unless it's connected and they're connecting with everybody. I want everybody to be connected. So Kahoot allows me to do that. Kahoot. So it's for face-to-face, -face, for online, for blended. But yeah, get a Kahoot, exactly. Thank you, Brian. All right, um, if there aren't any questions right now, you might have questions later on. I suggest you add them to um, support, whether you're on Moodle uh, for beginners or Moodle for non-beginners or on WizIQ. You can also add support and thank you. You may copy the chat. Uh, there's copy chat. You'll have to see it to know that it's there. Um, if you have the new WizIQ system, you go into the three bars. And if you open it up, it'll say uh, copy chat or pop out. And then you can copy chat. All right. So thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we have, I believe, two sessions, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? Two sessions. Let's see. Tomorrow is the um, 18. Yes. You have me with the first micro teaching on how to get started with micro teaching. And then um, we have digital literacy and higher education with Dr. Anitha Devi, who's really a passionate teacher. So we'll see you tomorrow and see you on the Moodle. I hope you try everything out and let me know how you're doing. And Tom, of course. Thank you, Tom. I'm waiting to hear your voice. Uh, is there a countdown that we can start counting? Do your tasks. Yes. Okay. Thank you. This has been recorded without the chat. Um, or the attendee list and will be uploaded to Vimeo and YouTube. Thank you, everyone.